Greetings. Our final project is about 20 news group classification and prediction. My name is Zi Hao Ren. My name is Zi Han Peng. First, let's introduce the dataset. Our project aims at how to classify the emails from 20 news group dataset and what methods are effective in classifying them. To make this easier to understand, the dataset labeled it different news group to different topics. It is a collection of approximately 20,000 news group documents, partitioned evenly across 20 different news group. There are currently three different versions of the dataset, and we choose the version which is sorted by date and a duplicate document in it has been removed. Notice that some of the news group that shares the prefix have contents which are more closely to each other than the one have different prefix. We originally decided in proposal that we want to classify them into six groups first and do the classification inside each groups. But in the process, we found that there's actually not very much point in doing this. And here is the sample of the tags we have. Now let's talk about the knowledge we use. The method we have implemented in this project mainly comes from what we have learned but uh, didn't have much chance to try out in the text classification, such as multi-class support vector machine. We also found that uh, other classification methods from scikit or documents to compare with Later, we also decided to give another try in principal component analysis that we had just learned two weeks ago to see if it works well on this particular dataset. We already implemented the support vector machine in Homework 3 and seeing it was effective in classifying the handwritten digits data. And we want to see whether it's also effective in classifying the text data like splitting the spam or non spam email. But the spam emails is only a binary classification, so we decided to use the support vector machine on this data set that had multiple labels to test its effectiveness. In comparison, we also choose other methods that can also be easily accessed through the scikit line. For this test, we found the naive Bayes and the nearest neighbors classifier would both work. We are curious about their performance compared to the support vector machine to see which one is the best in classifying this particular data set. In terms of PCA, for, which we, for what we have understood, should be able to decrease the time in classification since the projected feature vector have much less length than the original ones. Also, we only used PCA in image processing rather than in terms of text data. So we want to give this a try to see whether it works well alongside with those classification algorithms. Then we look at the code and the result. The data set we've chosen has already been pre-processed. The sorted by date, the duplicates and the headers were removed. We look at the code given by the previous programmers working on this data set, who's linked to given in this slide. And we found that the reason features cannot be extracted by scikit learners methods is that it is suggested that some files in the data sets are not compatible with UTF-8, even after the original processing. So we must remove these files that would throw any exception when features are extracted. Notice that we can still extract all features by hand, but it would take a much longer time to process and the number of files removed in the dataset is small enough to be omitted. In previous file, we noticed that, unlike what we have done in Homework 3, simply using 0 and 1 to denote whether a word appears inside a certain report is not the best way to construct feature vectors used in text classifying. The most significant reason being that is it didn't take the frequency of appearance of each word into account. The method we use here is called the term frequency times inverse document frequency, TFIDF. The basic idea of this method is to take the frequency of occurrence of each feature, in this case a word inside a certain file, 
divided by how many vials contains this word, which is the total frequency. So that we can determine how much the weight is put into this word in that certain file. Looking at the documents in Cycle 1, we found out uh, the exact formula to compute the inverse document frequency is not just taking the number of inverse percentage where, where the word appears in the file, but to take the logarithm of this percentage, n plus 1. Considering logarithm is an increasing function on R, this can simply be considered as a trick not to make the numbers inside the feature vectors too big. Constructing this can take time, but thankfully TFIDF feature vectors can be constructed directly from the files using the method in scikit-learn. Then after that, we use the feature vectors label to do a cross-validation using three different classifiers. Training set is 80%. And 20% validation set. First, let's look at the result of K nearest neighbors classifications. It performs very well in some specific topics such as religion and the group of uh, science. However, it fails in group of talk. One reason might be that talk does not have a specific topic so that the data could be distributed over all the place in the space. For naive buyers, we can find it works perfect in most groups, except talk and theism. When it comes to support vector machine, not only in the talk groups and the theism groups, which are not in love precise in naive buyers, meant a lot. But also, the rest of the groups improve a lot, some of them even approach 100%. Back to one of the issues we've been talking about in the introduction. We found out the first classifying the whole data set into six groups, then do a classification inside each group isn't really necessary. Here is the classification inside one of the groups. We can see that uh, there is not a significant improvement in classification precision. Let alone the first process of classifying the data set into six group itself contributes some discount in the accuracy. So we decided to directly classify the 20 news group in one step. As discussed before, we tried to use PCA to shorten the process. PCA has done a good job in the facial recognition system. However, it does not perform well in this particular data set according to the result. Here, let me explain why we only choose the first 10 eigenvectors. We calculated the accumulated proportion variance, and it shows that the first 10 eigenvectors build up 97.4% proportion variance, which is fully enough to fit our mode. Then, we can draw some conclusions. First, compared with K nearest neighbors and the uh, naive buyers, support vector machine performs best in the multi classification problem. Second, use principal component analysis in support vector machine does help to reduce the time in building up the mode. However, it doesn't perform well in the predict output. Its perception rate is only 72%. What's more, it takes time to finish the principal component analysis process. In fact, using principal component analysis in this actually takes more time. Principal component analysis would be much better in the situation that the size of the feature vectors is much larger than the size of the total dataset. In this project, the size of the dataset is similar to the size of the feature vectors, which would be the proportion reason that it is taking more time than expected. This could also be the result of that we didn't use the most efficient implementation of principal component analysis. Third, for the principal component analysis low precision, we think it doesn't perform well in the tax classifications. Since one tax don't actually cover all the feature vectors, in other words, 
The vocabulary in one text sample is much smaller than the size of the total word dictionary. However, the result is still kind of surprising to us, since the proportion variance is actually quite high.